the general theory of walkability explains how to be favored to satisfy needs four main conditions useful safe comfor comfortable and interesting good morning my name is francesca Nino. good morning my name is miguel Lanzaita. i'm santana wilkins and my name is Sarah Buster. our research question states what makes walkable cities have a positive impact in north america and our response to this argument is that walkable cities have a positive effect in, in regards to people and the cities in terms of urban design, investment which brings in tourists, and an environment in overall. Which brings up a really important question. What is urban design? To put it simply, urban design is the way a community identifies and manifests their cultural identity into the environment that they're surrounded by. To quote Gumlosare et al. in their thorough study of walkability and urban design, Designing a walkable city should include quantitative analysis and a human perspective. Of course, not all the time do urban designers, especially in North America, have the human perspective in mind. Here's an example in Quito, Ecuador. As you can see, there is a lot of greenery, spaces for pedestrians, spaces for seating, local businesses, and overall aesthetic appeal. This makes a good walkable city and this is good urban design. This type of design draws people out of their homes and forces them to connect with their community. This, in North America, an example of bad urban design, right here in Orlando, on the busiest seat at Lake Nona, Narcosi. Although Narcosi has many strip malls, this one is the most important to know, because this one is next to a public high school and surrounded by uh, residential areas. As you can see, there's little to no trees, which provides no shade and no aesthetic appeal in the uh, area. Although, yes, the area is surrounded by forest, the trees are not actually in the area where the pedestrians are walking. This creates an uncomfortable environment for the pedestrians. Overall, this urban, this type of urban design is not intended for humans and it's inhumane. Walkable cities are invested in more, which in turn brings in more people. Walkable cities are not just healthier, but also wealthier. The economic impact of walkable cities is something that is quite ignored, but it is a very big impact. The Highland Effect shows an iconic pedestrian park funded by 115 million of public interest, which ended up generating over 2 billion in private investment surrounding the park, attracting 5 million visitors a year, creating 12,000 new jobs. This brings in a lot of people, tourists, and a lot of money that is translated into the economic side. Walkability is perceived by people based on how nice it is to walk. People want to be able to walk from their homes to their jobs to the market and back. These aspects of comfortability influence the personal these aspects of comfortability influence the personality of the city and its residents by setting a foundation of how daily facets occur. For instance, New York, San Francisco, and Seattle are characterized as well-populated and easily accessible to focus, to focus on San Francisco, known as being the most walkable city in the US, described as everybody's favorite city for its cultural and racial diversity and its gorgeous, iconic scenery like, like Japantown, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Castillo, and much more, all while staying in a walk around. Similarly, despite New York's expansive size and population, it has maintained its reputation as remarkably Walkable. While some residents utilize buses and subways for long distances, the inherent accessibility and use of walking persists. Native New Yorkers claim that walking is a part of the city's allure, a sentiment that was also discussed on social media. The discourse of walkable cities has gained popularity to the general opinion to gain on the positive impact of the city, attesting to its comfortable nature. Walking has a better impact on cities than driving areas. Kamal Lassar et al. discusses the findings on how people perceive walkability. It is found, as a result, comfort impacts people's overall judgments of walkability, thereby potentially contributing to their walking activity, which is further presented in this graph here, which shows the quality of life of residents 
um, in cities that are walkable, and our students use that most of them find it enjoyable and a positive experience. Part of the dump are dominating urban traffic. There are a lot of different causes with cars that are harmful to the environment, like such as pollution. There are a lot of traffic noises and a lot of complaints when it comes to cars. However, according to the American Automobile Association, people spend on average $8,485 each year on their cars, but only 60% stays within the economy. A re reduction of 15,000 vehicles in a city would translate into 1, 127 million increase in local budget. Economist Joe Wright estimated residents in Portland saved more than $1 billion by driving 20% less than the rest of the country. That resulted in more disposal into the local income of businesses. This piece of evidence by Lewis Rebecca states that the combined use of land use, transit use, and walkable cities has known to reduce greenhouse gases and vehicle miles traveled. But then when you look at an individual aspect, all of these has, has shown to be increasing. Now, this, pe this picture is an evidence of the greenhouse gases being emitted, and that picture is an evidence of the vehicle miles traveled when we use each and every single aspect in the city. Our solution is less cars, which leads to a healthier environment, more walkable areas to attract more people, such as tourists, to come to these cities, putting more money into local businesses rather than cars to bring more money back into the economy, and walking distances, which increases physical activity. Though there are some limitations to our solution, which include limited housing options due to the amount of people that are being lured into walkable cities, noise and crowds, which might not be suitable for everyone due to the amount of tourism places that are available, and higher rent costs due to the demand. And this is a work cited. Thank you. All right, Santana, we'll start with you. Uh, Santana, uh, if you had a fifth member to your team, what perspective could they bring that would have helped you, um, helped your presentation? I think the perspective we could have used is more on cities that aren't really walkable. We could have used more examples, even though Miguel did add that, but I think we could have talked more about the pros and cons and differences of two different cities, like a walkable city. All right. Um, Shrey, what's a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about the research you conducted? The research I conducted stated that the environmental aspect would be highly increased and better due to the, due to the implementation of all four cities. But then when looking at the limitations, it might not be the best due to the noise and crowds. Okay. Uh, Francesca, what's an example of an argument from one of your peers' reports that you decided not to use and why didn't you use it? I decided not to use property value because I thought it was more of a, like a positive, but Shreya had more of a better argument against mine that it was more of a negative effect in walkable cities than a positive. Okay. And Miguel, um, which of your group's papers or talking to them or whatever gave you a better understanding of the problem that, that we're talking about? So I think when we're talking about cities and how walkable they can be, it's best to know the history of the cities and how they became to, um, to be walkable. So I think Santana's IR was the most informative. And although it doesn't advance our argument, it helps everyone have a deep understanding of what walkability is. 